welcome to Viewpoint. I'm joined today by Vasil Roshko. He's the head of the museum department at Ukraine's Ministry of Culture. Vasil, many thanks for joining us. Thanks for inviting me today. Of course, um, at the moment in the art world here in Ukraine and abroad, there is one story which has been stealing the headlines, which I can't not ask you about. Um, that is, of course, the fact that there's been these Dutch paintings which uh, were stolen from a Dutch museum many years ago. Uh, they apparently surfaced in East Ukraine and uh, a nationalist battalion, a Ukrainian nationalist battalion, says it has possession of, uh, of these artworks and tried to uh, sell them back to the museum but wasn't happy with the price and, and now it's a little bit murky. We're not quite sure where these paintings are. Uh, can, you, can you shed any light on this for us? Yes, I, I will talk from the name of the ministry and uh, it's a pity that so, so many negative information uh, is about Ukraine now but uh, reality is so. Ukraine um, uh, joined to convention uh, for preserving of illegal uh, movement of uh, museum artifacts. So Ukraine uh, is to is obliged to um, return museum artifacts stolen um, to the country. But uh, the, the problem it, is that Ukraine doesn't have control over it, this over it, this battalion, and they don't necessarily have the the it, means it to, to do It should be done through diplomatic canals, all of this information and all of these processes. But for um, for today, we have no official information from Netherlands to start official procedure of returning this. Uh, paintings because we don't uh, do not know exactly uh, are they here or not yes. uh, whom uh, they belong to uh, are they real or not so but we cannot start this process uh, because we have no official letters so yes. Yes. it's the reality that's why we asked everybody not to spread incorrect or not proper information without uh, knowing is it real or not. Um, I suppose it it's a pity that so many negative information is already in the internet. I, I suppose I mean, this is what it has done, it has brought the, the question of, of museum security into focus uh, here in, in Ukraine, especially uh, given the, the volatile situation with the conflict in East Ukraine and the insurgents who control territory there. I mean, presumably, with that territory, um, and we could also say the same for Crimea, which was annexed by Russia in March 2014. I mean, in Crimea, in Donbass, there are presumably historical artifacts there, museum artifacts there, museums which now the Ukrainian government does not control. And this must this presents a, a serious, I mean, potentially a serious uh, a risk. I mean, to control of, of these of these artifacts. Um. It's a pity, but during uh, wars, during such conflicts, many, a great part of uh, cultural heritage can be lost, and uh, partly because of uh, military actions, partly because of um, not professional evacuation, because when, uh, when some <laughs> artifacts are moved to another place to save them, but are not documented, they are lost also. And uh, now um, we have many uh, museums and um, museum objects uh, left on temporary uh, occupied territories in, of Crimea and uh, Donbass region. So in Crimea uh, it's uh, near one million and two um, hundred thousand museum objects and 35 museums and um, almost the same quantity in Donbass region and uh, we uh, don't have um, contacts with uh, another side with uh, a real situation because um, people are afraid uh, of uh, terrorists and um, after some calls, after some contacts with uh, Ukraine um, special services came to their houses and asked uh, and often 
these people were uh, thrown to prison. So in, 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 the, in the occupied territories, you mean? So I yes. mean, if, if, for example, citizens want to be in touch with the Ukrainian government side about what's going on, y yes. they, and, uh, they it's, are It's endangered. very dangerous for them because uh, it can happen today, it can happen tomorrow or in a week. And we understand that uh, such contacts uh, are dangerous for their lives. And also we, we know about new laws of Russia which let uh, Russia to uh, own <laughs> Ukrainian artifacts and Ukrainian uh, cultural heritage. Are you, uh, are you concerned then that, I mean, I suppose, I mean, in, in Crimea, okay, it's already, uh, as far as the Russians are concerned, it's officially part of, of Russia and those artifacts are now Russian. Are you concerned in the Donbass that, that uh, artifacts may be crossing the border into Russia? We in Crimea, uh, temporarily occupied in Donbass region also, um, uh, not controlled uh, territory by Ukraine. Uh, we can tell exactly about these uh, borders uh, which are under our control. But we don't know what happens uh, on uh, these lines uh, not controlled by Ukraine. So we uh, don't know if some artifacts are not in Russia yet, and for example in, in Crimea we know about um, special uh, cooperation between uh, Crimea museums and Hermitage in Russia and um, under, for example, uh, under view, like uh, exhibition or restoration or they, they can just uh, take some objects and uh, to, to Russia via uh, sea. Yes. Or, and have you seen yeah. that? Has that happened actually? You have concrete examples where you've seen, no, you, no, haven't, no, no, you haven't seen artworks. No, no. only some, some uh, in messages Russia. in internet but they are not um, not official, not, okay. uh, we are not sure in their truth, okay. but uh, Russia that... did special laws for this. Yes. And so you, you, you expect that that could happen in yes, the future? Yes, yeah. Th it? that's why we ask about, uh, we ask UNESCO and uh, European Council to do special monitoring of this problem because it's an international problem. And uh, usually during war conflicts, um, both sides <sighs> take care of uh, cultural heritage. Yes. In spite of in spite of the hostilities. You but uh, we have just <laughs> another situation, and with terrorists and this marking of cultural heritage um, doesn't mean its preservation. And uh, finally, we're, we're nearly out of time, unfortunately. So uh, what is the ministry doing now to try to prevent this sort of thing in the future? I assume steps are being taken in, in areas controlled by the Ukrainian government to secure the collections. Uh, we try to... Uh, we started systematic work to uh, prevent this situation in future and to be ready for the situation. Because last year we were not ready to war and to museum problems of such uh, scale. That's why we do this in documentation preservation, in personal uh, training, and some uh, Ukrainian museum workers um, learned in abroad um, in, in um, ICROM. Uh, technology, methodology, how to preserve museum objects for weeks and now they came to Ukraine and we start uh, such trainings in Ukraine. So many things, you know, are not only in knowledge, many things should be like uh, everyday usual uh, things uh, as reflects. Uh, it happens and you're just ready to do this in, in minutes, in seconds to prevent your life, to preserve and to preserve artifacts if possible. So now we, we start to do this systematically. The problem is that uh, many, many years we uh, had the remains of Soviet system, of Soviet uh, government system, and we should start it from the beginning. Um, not only museum security, but <laughs> all museum sphere and all museum government. But we, we do this. 
All right. Well, it sounds like there is still a little bit of work to do, but uh, I'm afraid that's where we'll have to leave it. We're, we're out of time. Vasil, I want to thank you very much for coming in to speak with us. Thank you. You've been watching Viewpoint. I've been joined by Vasil Rozhko. He is the head of the museum department at Ukraine's Ministry of Culture. That's all we have time for. Join us again next time.